before Jesus ever existed, and even if he had never existed, there already was in the first century Mediterranean world a human being, now definitely a human being, whose titles were divine, son of God, God incarnate, God from God, Lord, Redeemer, Liberator, Savior of the world. Those, as no doubt you know, were the titles of Caesar the Augustus, Caesar the one to be worshipped. It's Sebastus in Greek, Augustus in Latin means the one to be worshipped. What happens when titles like those, the titles of Roman imperial theology, are taken from the emperor who lives on the Palatine Hill in Rome and given to a Jewish peasant who lives on the Nazareth Ridge in Galilee of all places. What happens when the titles of Roman imperial theology are taken from the imperial Rome and given to Jesus? Octavian is master of the world. And at that spot of Axiom, the goddess Apollo, who, who is the father, the alleged father, shall we say, of, of Augustus, appears above his ship and says to him, Savior of the world, now conquer at sea, the land is already yours. Savior of the world. And then we know what it means. He has saved the Roman world from absolutely destructive civil war. And Julius Caesar appears to him and says, you are of my blood. This proves it. So we're beginning to see victory. It's about victory. If you don't know Roman imperial theology, you will not be able to understand Christian theology, Pauline theology, New Testament theology, because it is set over against it. If you think of Caesar as a incarnate program of peace through victory, then Jesus is an alternative incarnate program. Remember the matrix. We talked about the matrix is Jesus as a homeland Jew within eschatological Judaism, within Roman imperialism. The glue that held the Roman Empire together was Roman imperial theology. The emperor was divine. The acts of the divine Augustus, the title in Latin is res geste divi Augusti. Because for the Romans, like the Greeks before them, there were human beings, human beings who could be raised to divine status. They knew, of course, of the immortal gods like Zeus or Jupiter, but they also believed that certain human beings could be ordinary human beings, stick them with a pin that go out, could be raised to divine status, and when they died, they were taken up to the gods. If, if they had done something of extraordinary value for the human race. So if you're going to make those claims for Jesus, you have to have a counter-program, and a counter-program incarnate in Jesus. So when you look at Rome and Augustus, anywhere you look, the temples, the shrines, the inscriptions, the coins, the coins, the only, the only mass medium of antiquity. So you're getting a message from the coinage as a whole. There's only one expression on the coins. All it says is Caesar DVF in Latin, Caesar, son of God.
and other expressions that many of us would think of, well, these are peculiarly Christian. And we're going to learn they were really Roman imperial titles, expressions, even expressions like gospel, for example, or even remission of sins, even epiphany. Words like that came out of the Roman matrix into the Christian matrix. They're never just talking about the Mediterranean or Italy or Rome. They're talking about the whole world has been saved by Caesar, as we saw at Axios. So, the birthday of Caesar, they say, is good news, gospel, new angelia, the word we use for gospel. The birthday of Caesar is good news for the whole world, is epiphany, has not just brought peace out of war, but creation out of chaos. So, as you read this inscription, you almost see the whole theology, the whole Christian theology coming at you out of Roman imperial theology. This is extraordinary. We thought that Paul invented the term a new creation just for Jesus. We thought that the idea of calculating time, as Christians do, that goes with, with Christianity, this was already there. Time and place belongs to Rome. Time and place is incarnate in Caesar. Caesar, the Son of God. The Son of God. And it's exactly the same word, of course, in Greek, that Son of God is all over the New Testament. Theo Weos.